Now we're going to have to read another law. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt, do, shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the Sabbath day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Well, now we're going to go to Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, and what verse? Verse 13. Amen. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And now we'll uh, go to please. Yeah, I'm going to Revelation 22. And we'll pick it up at verse 14. Yes, sir. Revelation 22 and 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh the lie. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. We can see from reading God's word that the commandments is the key and getting into the kingdom of God. So don't let nobody tell you that the commandments ain't no more. The commandment is the keys of the kingdom. Don't let nobody tell you different. Yes, sir. But I just want to introduce myself, which, you know, I ain't nobody. Jesus is everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, my name is Brother Ray. I'm from the Chicago camp. I'm one of the teachers, probably the least among all of them. But they let me come on out to Oakland today and... Uh, I guess they uh, tested me out. <laughs> but, uh, you know, me and Brother James go be, and his family go way back. And uh, Brother been doing a great work. He come down here and set this up. And this is almost loaded up. I don't know. Maybe I started coming and started working for James. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but blessed be the name of the Lord God. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, I want you to take these notes down today, people, because this is a very important message that the Lord has given me out of his word. And we see times are getting rough. This thing is on top of us. The kingdom is closer than we ever thought it would be. The Lord gave the signs in Matthew 24, but he gave them all over the book. But I just seen uh, this morning that an earthquake was in uh, Morocco or whatever that place was. Mm -hmm. Almost a thousand died just this morning, people. And the Lord on the, uh, you know, he said on his second coming, these is going to be his signs that you're going to see before he comes. One of them was earthquakes in divers places, diving being different. I mean, wars and rumors of war. 
wars and commotions, pestilence, all of these things is happening. Even if you got some understanding, looking at the news is just like reading the Bible. If you got some understanding, mm. that's how much this word is coming to pass. Yes, sir. But today we're gonna deal with a thing called the just shall live by his faith. Cause see, I, I've been around a while. I'm gonna say that. And I've seen a few brothers come and go that had good understanding. But somewhere along the line, they lost their faith. And see, the title of this lesson today is called The Just Shall Live by His Faith. The just shall live by his faith. Because people, if you lose your faith, that's when Satan's going to get you. You can't lose your faith. The books say, how does faith come? Who can tell me? How does faith come? Romans 10. What does it say? Faith come by what? The hearing of the word. Hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more word you hear, the more faith you're going to have. Praise God. Man. But I want y'all to take these notes and look at this real close because this is like an ace card that a servant of God need in his back pocket in these days we're living in now. So we're going to kick this off. With any further ado, we're going to start this in Deuteronomy 32. And we're going to see where our forefathers went wrong. See, sometimes you have to go back and see where you went wrong. And then you can change it along the way. But if you never know where you went wrong, you can't fix it. You cannot fix it. But this is, we're going to see what the book says. See, this is what our thing is in Israel of God. We let the book speak. You know, people, Lord, I need to hear a word from you. Well, just pick up your Bible and start reading it. <laughs> you got plenty of words in there for you. Yes, sir. But this is the thing is we got away from God's word and our faith went down the drain. But Deuteronomy 32 and verse 15, what does that say, bro? But Jezreel waxed fat and kicked. Now, just one is a name for another name for Jerusalem, but go ahead and read. Thou art waxing fat, thou art grown thick. Uh huh. Thou art covered with fatness. Go ahead. Then he forsook God, which made him, uh -huh. and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. And this is what we do as a people. See, when you start waxing fat, Lord, start blessing you, things you're used to handling more money than you're accustomed to, all of a sudden you wax fat, and you start kicking against the Lord. That's our M.O. And the Lord hates that people, because no matter how you prosper, don't ever forget to wipe the one that gave it to you. Yes, Lord. But go ahead and read, brother. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. Uh -huh. With abominations provoked they him to anger. Oh, this is what our forefathers did? Worshiping them strange gods? And we're getting ready to enter off into the strange god season, people. And what's going to kick it off? Halloween. But go ahead and read. Let's see what they're dealing with, though. Let's see what this season is called. Go ahead. They sacrifice unto devils. Oh, right? that's what they're doing? Mm -hmm. And if you follow them, what you sacrifice to? Mm. Go ahead and read. Not to God, mm -hmm. to gods whom they knew not. Go ahead. To new gods that came newly up, uh -huh. whom your fathers feared not. Our father in the city is God, the God of Halloween. And so what, who is that? <laughs> but go ahead and read. Of the rock that begot thee, thou uh -huh. art unmindful, uh -huh. and hast forgotten God that formed thee. See, this is what done happened. We done forgot about God, see? How are you going to get through this world without God? Mm. You're going to make a mistake and might destroy you and your whole family. But go ahead and read, brother. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them uh -huh. because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. Lord, looking at you, he got seven spears, people, and they could police the world. They watch everything that we do. Don't nothing get by. And they writing it down in a book. Seven spirits. Lord said they move like lightning. They can cover this whole earth. When you in the do drop in hotel with somebody else's old lady, them angels is in there just about three o'clock. <laughs> I mean, they locking it down, people. And don't you know when you stand before the throne, that's going to be thrown before you. That's why you got to watch what you do, people. Ain't nothing free. Every Lord is looking at everything. And once you know that, you, you'll move a little with caution. But go ahead and read. And he said, I will hide my face from them. Uh -huh. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very forward generation. Uh -huh. Children in whom is no faith. Children in whom is what? No faith. And that's what happened to our father. And don't you know we suffer from the same thing? The book said we have done worse than our father. We ain't got no faith. We supposed to be getting our children up in the morning, 
before they get to school or on the Sabbath or first day of the week. And like my manager, do his son, he told him, come out here, boy. And I'm looking, he said, watch this, Ray. I said, well, he said, give me 10. So I'm looking for the boy to jump down and do some push-up. That boy started running them commandments off. Every last one of them. I said, man, I, boy, you got you something there. Right. I, I said, look here. Then his son turned around and told him, you give me 10, Dad. Uh -huh. I, so I stepped on out of the room because I he was going to hit me next. But <laughs> the thing was, people, hey, but that was beautiful. I said, Dad, that's what you got to do. Yes, sir. Raise a child up the way he should go, and when he is grown, we'll he won't part. depart from it. But if you don't do it, we're going to have a whole lot of children with no faith. Mm -hmm. And without faith, it's impossible to deal with the Lord. Yes, sir. But now let's see what else they did. Go right up, back up to uh, 31 now. 31. We're just going to read 21 and 22. Deuteronomy 31, 21, and 22. Go ahead and read. And it shall come to pass when many evils and troubles are befallen them, uh -huh. that this song shall testify against them as a witness. For it shall not be forgotten out of the mouths of their seed. Uh -huh. For I know their imagination, which they go about even now, before I have brought them into the land, which I swear. And just some, he knows what you're going to do before you got in the land. But back up and read that 20th verse. What did it say? For when I shall have brought them into a land, which I swear unto their fathers, uh -huh. that floweth with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves and waxen fat, then will they turn unto other gods and serve them and provoke me and break my covenant. See, the Lord knows what you're going to do all the time. And we're still serving them pagan gods right now. But the Lord said when that trouble come, he is going to hide his face from you. And see, you can call on the God of Christmas. So you'll do Christmas and Easter and Halloween dealing with that God of the dead, which is Sam Haynes, mm -hmm. and y'all celebrate and party and mistletoes hanging all off your head. And <laughs> I mean, you're having a good time and enjoying yourself. But when that trouble comes, you want the God of Israel to show up because mm. he is the true and living God. Santa Claus ain't going to come and deliver your people. You can wait and wait for him. When I was a short, I looked for him a long time. I said, Mom, you know what? Dad, I, I never seen Santa. Mm -mm. But they wouldn't say nothing. Nope. I know my dad wants to say, poor the son ain't did nothing for you. I almost <laughs> killed myself working right. this overtime trying to get. Right. But, uh, <laughs> but this thing is, hey, but that broke my heart when I found that there wasn't no Santa Claus, man. Because you lie. But see, it's a, it's another God you worship. And how do I know that? How is uh, a one man going to hit every house in the world in one night? On a sled with reindeers, can a big old bag of toys coming down the <laughs> chimney, and you believe that? <laughs> no one of these fall props is taking your money. <laughs> they said they'll go for that. They'll go for anything. <laughs> that is crazy. But and we still doing it till this day. We lost our faith and we turned away from God. But now let's go to Hebrews the fourth chapter. Hebrews focus. Sometimes you just got to sit back and let the book talk to you. Yes, sir. And uh, it's a uh, you got to burn that candlelight. You got to get that daily bread. You got to eat that bread from heaven. Hebrews four. We're gonna pick it up at verse one. This this what happened with our father. So we can look back and don't make the same mistakes they made. Hebrews four and verse one. What did it say, brother? Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. And that rest, what is that rest? That's that thousand years of peace. That's what we're trying to get to. That represents Jesus' kingdom, which represents the Sabbath day. The little sister told me, well, you know, the Saturday, it ain't no good. It ain't the Sabbath no more. I said, well, sister, you just threw away the kingdom of God. Right. You just threw away a thousand years of peace. Do you know what you're really doing with that? Hmm. But now, let's see what he said. Now, go ahead and say, unless uh, it, it, uh, 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 let it be left us uh, of entering into the rest. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Any of you should seem to come short of it. See, our fathers didn't come short of it. They came short of it because they didn't believe. And we're going to do the same thing if we don't watch ourselves. Go ahead and read. For unto us was the gospel preached uh -huh. as well as unto them. Go ahead. But the word preached did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So when you hear that word, you got to be mixed with what? With faith. Because faith is what you're going to start doing. Mm -hmm. 
You're going to keep the commandments because you believe that the Lord got a lake of fire laying there and you don't want to go there. Come on. So what your faith do? It calls you to start walking right and doing the things that the Lord say so you won't have to suffer that judgment. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, That's why the book said, let each soul work out his own salvation. Fear, Fear and tremble. tremble. Ain't that what the book says? Yes, sir. But now, what where, where you at? The end of two, sir. Go ahead and read. For we which have believed do enter into rest. All the ones that believe, they're going to enter into that rest. Go ahead. As he said, uh -huh. as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, uh -huh. although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. But how are you going to throw the Sabbath day away and the Lord instituted it at the foundation of the world? Mm -hmm. He made the Sabbath day, but wasn't a Jew, wasn't a Gentile, wasn't a Hamite, wasn't nobody there. This is the Sabbath of the Lord. And the Sabbath was made for man. And this is when the Lord is going to set his kingdom up. This is a thousand years of peace. But you ain't going to enter in there if you don't believe. Mm -hmm. And how do you believe? By the word of God. Some people sit in church, man, for 40 years. And don't even know when this Sabbath day is. Mm. True. I mean, so that should be some trumpets blowing in your mind that you in the wrong place. I mean, ain't nobody in the camp can count to seven? <laughs> what's, what's going on? But this is what it is. This is what it's come to. This is how far we done got away from God. But what verse are you at, brother? The end of three. Go ahead and read. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. Uh -huh. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Uh -huh. And in this place again. If they shall enter into my rest. Go ahead. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein. Go ahead. And they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Oh, that's why they didn't enter in. They waxed fat. They kicked. The Lord stopped blessing them. And then they forgot all about God. Mm -hmm. They forgot about the commandments, the feast day, all of these right. things. Go ahead and read. Again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, today, after so long a time, as it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. And this is the thing, people, when you hear that voice, what voice? Is the Lord hollering down from heaven? No, no. When you crack this book, people, you hear the voice of the Lord. Yes, sir. When you at home reading that Bible, mm -hmm. and the Lord is dealing with your mind, you and the Lord said he's going to be a little sanctuary unto you. Mm. And he's right there with you. That Holy Ghost whispering in the ear. Now go over there to Acts, the fifth chapter. And pick it up at 27, brother. <laughs> and you run over there, it's right there what you need. Because you in the sanctuary, Pete. Lord ain't going to never leave you nor forsake you, but you got to seek the Lord. And you'll find him. Yes, sir. Knock and the door shall be open. But now, they didn't end the end. Why? Because of unbelief. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. Let's see what happens. Lord's been giving us warnings all over the book. Don't be like your forefathers. We got to believe now. But we got pushed into a corner now because everything else has done fell us and ran out. There's only one door to go through now. Yes, sir. And that's the Lord God of Israel. We run into the Lord. First Corinthians 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 6. First Corinthians 10 and 6. We still dealing with our forefathers and learning what not to do. We got to be better than them. Go ahead and read. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. That's one thing we got to get rid of lusting after the evil things. That's one thing Israel is chief in. But go ahead and read. Neither be you idolaters. Uh -huh. As with some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And see, that's Israel's MO. We love to eat and drink and rising up to play. But that ain't going to get us into the kingdom, people. The Lord said, My people love flagons of yes, wine. Yes, he do. He ain't lying. But now, eighth verse, what else he said? We yes, did. sir. Neither let us commit fornication, uh -huh. as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and 20,000. See, what kind of mindset is on our forefathers? The Lord and brought them 10 plagues and brought us through Egypt in the wilderness, and then you're going to start committing fornication? And no God looking right at you? Come on, people. That's a bad mindset, man. But we are the children of those people, people. That's why we got to watch ourselves. Got to be careful. I had to look around. I said, man, ain't nobody doing nothing to me. Who is messing me up? It's me. I told Brother Boy one day, Boy, I want to see the devil. He said, look in the mirror. 
<laughs> I went on to the crib. I, I, <laughs> that brother there, he can see something there. But <laughs> the thing is, though, this is the one you got to watch out for. But ninth verse, go ahead and read. Neither let us tempt Christ, uh -huh. as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Lord said the serpents among them. Go ahead and read. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Who was the destroyer? Christ. Satan the devil. Mm -hmm. You remember he got his name in the Greek tongue, Apollyon. The Hebrew mm -hmm. is a baton. But both of them mean what? Destroyer. Mm -hmm. So he is destroyer. The Lord sent him um, the Satan on us because what we was murmuring. Mm -hmm. You always complain. See, we 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 are complaining people. We are Lord hate that complaint. You got two loaves of bread under your arm, a big sandwich in your hand, three cars in the driveway, a big crib, four closets full of clothes, and then you talking about, oh man, the Lord show sure it treat me bad. <laughs> what what do you want? <laughs> What's gonna satisfy you? You know what I'm saying? Come on, this is what we gotta look at. When we're murmuring and complaining, what else you say now? <laughs> Verse 11. Now, all these things happen unto them for it in samples. Oh, these were examples for uh -huh. us. For and, us. Go yes, ahead. Sir. And they are written for our admonition uh -huh. upon whom the ends of the world are come. Now, admonition means it's a warning. Don't be like your profile. Hmm. And he said, read the 11 verse again for me, Yes, please. sir. Now all these things happen unto them for examples, uh -huh. and they are written for our admonition. To warn us. Yes, sir. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. Well, you mean to tell me the ends of the world that came upon us, people? Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me we living in the days that all the prophets have spoke of? Mm -hmm. I wish to see. And they wanted to see them things, but they can't see them. But the Lord had it for this generation. Mm -hmm. We getting ready to see Everything that's written in the book is getting ready to be fulfilled in our time. Lord said, the generation that see these things shall not pass until all be fulfilled. I absolutely go. Oh, this is why it's time to gird up. Remember now, the Lord told you it was 10 virgins. Five was wise, five was foolish. Five put oil in their lamp and five didn't. And those that put that oil in their lap when the bridegroom came, they was ready to go in. But those that didn't have, they said, give us up, give me, give me some of your oil. They say, I ain't got enough. Mm -hmm. I only got enough for me. Go to them that buy and sell. And by the time they came back, it was too late. So this is the time to load that your mind up with that oil, which is the word of God. Give us this day what kind of bread? Our daily bread. Get on it, and it's beautiful. And you'll love it. And once you get yourself in that mindset, you can't wait to get back home from work to get back in that body. Mm -hmm. But now, where do we stop at? Let's... In the 11. Okay, because he said he's in, in, in 11. Go ahead and read. Oh, it was in the 11. In 11, 12. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. What? Ain't that something? So when you think you're strong and you're doing good, don't think you puffed up and you're the best servant God ever had because mm -hmm. you're going to slip and fall and scrunch in your nose. That's real. That's real, brother. Because the Lord said, and ain't. Let, let, in fact, let's go take a look at that. This is a Come little on. off the, the, the title, but I just want to show you take this so you'll know. Because what got Satan kicked out, he was puffed up. Mm -hmm. His wisdom and his beauty, it perverted him. I'm going to Psalms 130. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was looking for that when he said, uh, if he should mark iniquity, who shall stand? I thought that was Psalms 130. What verse? Mm -hmm. Three. Okay, I thought I was there. But start at verse one. Yes, sir. I just want everybody to know this. Go ahead. We're going to get back to the lesson. Go ahead. Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Uh huh. Lord. Hear my voice. Go ahead. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. That's right. That's when you're praying to the Lord. You want him to hear you. Go ahead and read. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? Ain't that something? So if he marked our iniquities, who would stand, people? Who would? No That's one. why we got to be up under the blood. Mm -hmm. And when he see that blood, he going to do what? Pass over. Pass over. But if he look beyond the blood, everybody's going down. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? 
So don't be nowhere thinking you sanctified and holy and y'all. Hey, you just are serving the God, and it's going to take everything you got to be that. Don't let nobody fool you. But now, let's go to Numbers. He said he sent them some them servants among them, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Let's go look and see. Because the Lord was trying to instill faith in you now. Because he know you ain't have none. So he had to set something up so that you would start believing in the Lord. And let's see what he did. Numbers 21. We're going to pick it up at verse 5. Numbers 21 and verse 5. Y'all getting some understanding? Praise God. Man, y'all might have quiet out there. You know, do we know how to go on outside and play something like California volleyball? Right, right, right. And do we keep getting down? <laughs> All right. Numbers 21 and verse 5, people. Let's see what happened. Numbers 21 and verse 5. I'm going to wait on you this time. I ain't going to rush. 21 and verse 5. Okay, go ahead. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Mm, they still doing it this day. Go ahead. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? Uh. For there is no bread, neither is there any water. And our soul loathes this light bread. See, that's that complaining and murmuring. The Lord was sending them bread down from heaven. He called it angel food. Mm -hmm. It was like a wafers and coriander seeds. It was good. Mm -hmm. talking about, we, I so hate this little old bread you sent from heaven. I we ain't never satisfied. Mm -hmm. You getting bread from heaven and you complaining? <laughs> ain't nobody did that but us, man. You mm -hmm. hear what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> nobody. But go ahead and read. Six. <laughs> and the Lord sent fiery serpents. Among the people. See how the Lord ate that bread? Yeah, that bread ain't no good, huh? He sent them snakes on you. Well, how about this? He'll, he'll get your attention. But read that aside that six again and go ahead. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. Uh -huh. And they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Ain't that something? Just from that murmuring, man. Stay away from that murmur. If you don't like a thing, just don't say nothing. Mm -hmm. Just deal with it. Yep. Go ahead and read. That's true. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned, uh -huh. for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee, praying to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. Mm -hmm. And Moses prayed for the people. Yes, sir, but when them servants came on the scene, that's when they started to see the light. <laughs> Moses, we have sinned against the Lord and you too. Hey, but Moses prayed for the people. But let's see what happened now. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, She'll live. Ain't just some because the Lord putting that faith in you. But what if you didn't look up when you got bit? You would die. Mm -hmm. But if you believe what the Lord said, you will look up at that serpent and you will be healed. Go ahead and read. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it up on a pole. And it came to pass uh -huh. that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he had beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. He lived because the Lord putting that faith on you. Because if you didn't believe the Lord, you wouldn't look up. Mm -hmm. And this is the whole thing. But the Lord is still sending them serpents among us today, people. What do you call, what is uh, the devil's name? One, one of his names is what? Serpent. The serpent. <laughs> but the thing is, though, them serpents is coming, up, them serpents is coming among you today, people, and they biting you. And if you don't know how to get away from them, you're going to be taken because you're fighting against a spirit you can't even see. He's still putting them servants among you. But now, flip over to, uh, let's go to St. John 12. And uh, kind of hold them comments down from the peanut gallery, my brother. Can you do that for me? I appreciate it. Now, uh, St. John 12 and 32. St. John 12 and 32. We're just going to read this one verse. Let's see what the Lord told St. John. 12 and 32. What did it say now, brother? Ready? And I... Wait, wait, wait. wait. Let me take some people more pages. I want everybody to be with you. See, this is why the lesson takes long. It ain't because I got so many scriptures. It's taking y'all long to find the book. <laughs> but go ahead and read, brother. What is it? And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Ain't just some? So just like that serpent was lifted up, Jesus said, if you lift him up, He'll draw all men unto you. And see, this is a thing a preacher's supposed to know. If you're lifting up the name of Jesus, he said, you'll draw all men unto you. Yes, sir. But you got to be coming with that truth. But let's look at it again this time. Bag up to St. John 3 and look at it one more time okay. to make sure we got this thing right. That's what I love about the Bible. You don't have to make up. You don't have to speculate. Just flip the page and read. The Bible will interpret itself. 
St. John 3 and verse 11. What did it say? St. John 3 and 11. St. John 3 and 11. Go ahead. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know uh -huh. and testify that we have seen. Yeah. And you receive not our witness. And they got something we still ain't receiving the witness. Because why? We don't believe. We don't believe the word of God. Go ahead and read. If I have told you earthly things uh -huh. and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Lord, so if you didn't believe earthly things, how are you going to believe heavenly things, which is spiritual things? Go ahead and read. And no man that has ascended up to heaven. But well, now he, read that one more time. What that say? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, mm -hmm. but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Now, who is all these people up in heaven? There ain't nobody never sent us up there. Mm. Who's up there? Ain't nobody up there but angels, Jesus, and the Father. Yeah. Because the Lord said, ain't no man ascended up. No is absolute, ain't it? But look what he said now. This is what he wants you to do. Go ahead and read. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Ain't that something? Ain't that what we read? Go ahead and read. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Ah, uh, because now everybody know this scripture right here. If you don't know no book, you know this. this right. Verse right here. Go ahead and read. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, uh -huh. that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Ain't that son? How many times have you quoted that but didn't understand it? Hmm. But you've got to believe in him know if you want that everlasting life. Now, you're going to get everlasting flights on the other side, too, but you don't want to be on that side. You want to be on the right side with the Lord, with that everlasting life in God's kingdom. So now, you stop that uh, 16. Yeah, 16. Now, let's go a little further. Let's go to Isaiah 53. Yes, sir. Because we're seeing that this is what held us up. No belief. We lost the faith. And anytime you serve in God, you lose the faith. You threw. Satan got you. I seen brothers be in this thing, be in it solid, got some good understanding. In some kind of way, they stopped believing. And they just fell away, man. I couldn't believe it. Broke my heart, brought me to tears. Because not only when he left, he took his whole family with him. And this is bad. Isaiah 53 and 1. Let's see what happened now. Go ahead and read. Who have believed our report? Nobody, really. The very few. Now, tomorrow the church is going to be packed with Sunday worship. But today, the gate is straight and narrow, and few that be that find it. But go ahead and read. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Uh huh. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. Yes, sir. And as a root out of a dry ground, he hath no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Right, because Jesus wasn't coming to put on no fashion show like they got him with that long hair. Blue eyes, he up on the rocks, and I, gee, they, they wasn't, he wasn't about that. He's coming to preach that gospel, but he said he gonna come out of the dry ground. Yeah, that dry ground is Israel, people, because Jesus came right out of Israel, came out of the tribe of Judah. But go ahead and read now. He is despised and rejected of men. Yes, sir. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. Uh huh. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. They still they don't even want to say his name. I mean, ain't no J in the alphabet. I said, well, you know, the Lord called that name on him when uh, he was in the womb. The book said the name was sit down from heaven. Mm -hmm. I wonder if was any J's in heaven. Do you know? I don't think so. But go ahead and read. Show you how foolish that is. Fourth verse. What did yes, it say? Surely he hath borne our griefs uh -huh. and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Yeah, but why was he afflicted? Go ahead. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Uh -huh. He was bruised for our iniquity. Go ahead. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. With his stripes. That's how you get healed by his stripes. Because what he suffered, because he came to die for me. Because he didn't come and shed his blood. The whole creation was going straight to the leg of fire. But Jesus came and died for you. But look what he said. Now, six verse. All we like sheep have gone astray. Uh huh. We have turned everyone to his own way. What is this? What we doing? You do your own thing. They tell you all, all the time. Look, you serve God your way. I serve God my way, and we both serving God. I said, no, no, neither one of us is serving God because we ain't doing it his way. But every man turned to his own way. Go ahead, and finish that. Uh huh. And the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. And there's some. He bore all our iniquity, so we wouldn't have to pay the price. 
Yeah. But that uh, you serve God your way and I serve God my way been around a long time. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go to Judges, the book of Judges. If you can find Joshua, you ain't too far from Judges. They've been saying that a long time, people. Yes. You know, you serve God your way. Everybody is serving, you know. I said, no, but I said, but what you going to do about the Lord's way? That's what you got to be concerned with. Right. Judge is 21, and we're going to pick it up at 25. It's going to read one verse. Judge is 21 and 25. What did it say? Hey, stuck. Mm hmm. <laughs> See, that's a sign you need to start reading more. That's oh, yeah. That's one book you ain't touching is Judges. <laughs> it got stuck. <laughs> Oh, take, take, take. Yeah. Take. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Judges uh, 20, 21 and 25. What did it say? In those days, there was no king in Israel. Uh -huh. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And they're doing the same thing now. Doing right what's in your own eyes. But I wonder what it hold up to the Lord. But now let's go to Rebecca. One Another one of them easy books. Rebecca, Habakkuk. I don't know, am I pronouncing that right? You got it, Habakkuk. And we're going to go to Habakkuk, the second chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse one. Well, Lord, left all these things on for you that you would know how to conduct yourself and know not to be like your father. And you could be better, and you don't want to miss your gift. You don't want the Lord to tell you you ain't entering into my rest because of unbelief. Right. Mm -mm. Yes, sir. And then some brothers lose their faith. That's what killed me. That scares me. Habakkuk 2 and verse 1, what did it say? Oh, wait, I hear this is page. Take your time. We with you. You there? Because I want everybody to see this thing. We got to be on one accord. Okay, go ahead. I will stand upon my watch uh -huh. and set me up on the tower. And see, that's what you're supposed to be doing, standing there on watch at the gates, watching what? The signs and everything was happening in the earth. The Lord is doing exactly what he said. That's how you know his second coming is near. But go ahead and read. And we'll watch to see what he will say unto me. Uh -huh. And that I shall answer when I am reproved. Go ahead. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it a plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. That's right. Go ahead. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Uh -huh. At the end it shall. But it's read, read it again. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, uh -huh. but at the end it shall speak oh. and not lie. Go ahead. Though it tarry, wait for it, uh -huh. because it will surely come. It will not tarry. You see what the Lord say? So people talking crazy, you know, the Lord ain't coming, and all that mm -hmm. word ain't nothing. But the Lord said, keep saving me. Though it tarry, wait for it, because when it come, it will surely come, and it will not tarry. But you want to make sure you write when it comes. But fourth verse, what did he say? Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. Oh, that's when you lift it up. I mean, you're puffed up. You're thinking you're something when you're nothing. But go ahead and read. But the just shall live by his faith. How the just going to live, people? By his faith. Oh. And so that's what happened to our forefathers. We didn't have no faith. But now, let's go to Psalms 85. But that's how the judge, the just going to live, people, by his faith. Yes, sir. By your faith is how you're going to live. And don't doubt. Psalms 85, and we're going to pick it up at verse 8. Psalms 85 and 8. Psalms 85 and 8. Psalms 85 and 8. Okay, my brother. I will hear what God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace unto his people uh -huh. and to his saints. But let them not turn again to folly. In other words, once you come into this thing and you got that baptism, and the Lord said, don't turn again to that folly. Don't go back to what you came out. He said, you'll be like a dog turning to his own vomit. Mm -hmm. And the sire that was washed to a wallet in the mire. You're going back to that old God, but you don't want to do that. But go ahead and read. Surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him. Oh, if you fear the Lord, the Lord's salvation is near you. Go ahead and read. That glory may dwell in our land. Uh huh. Mercy and truth are met together. Yes. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Right, because there ain't no confusion against them. They want to call. 
But go ahead and read. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. That's right, but not till the Lord get here. Go ahead. Yeah, the Lord shall give that which is good, and our land shall yield her increase. But this is what we need. Righteousness shall go before him, and shall set us in the way of his steps. Set us in the way of his steps. That means you ain't doing your will. You're doing the Lord's will. And when you're stepping like that, you're on the right road. Mm -hmm. But now, let's go to Hebrews 10 now. He got to serve us in the way of his steps. We got to have that faith. We got to believe his word. Yes, sir. But it's only one way faith comes, and that's by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hebrews 10, we're going to pick it up at verse 16. Hebrews 10 and 16. This is a lesson every servant of God should know. 10 and 16, what does it say? This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. Remember now, we broke the covenant. Our fathers broke the covenant. He said, this is the covenant I got to make with them. Go ahead and read. I will put my laws into their hearts, uh -huh. and in their minds will I write them. Oh, so he ain't writing them on stone no more. He's going to write it in your heart. What's your heart? Your mind. This is where the commandment is going to be. So when you get ready to do something wrong, that man going to tell you, God shall not. Go ahead and read. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Right. Ain't the Lord going to come die for you? And ain't no more animals going to die for you. Go ahead and read. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Uh-huh. By a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. That's right. His flesh. This is what you got to go through now. You got to go through Jesus to get to the Father. Some people think they can go straight to the Father, like the Jehovah Witness. He said, no, no. Unless you come through Jesus, you can't. The Father ain't going to listen to nobody but Jesus. Because mm -hmm. he is the mediator. But now, skip down to verse 31. What does he say now? It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Uh-huh. The call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of affliction. After you were illuminated. What do you mean by after you were illuminated? After that light hit you, after that truth hit you, then you was, uh, uh, you was a victim of affliction because everybody was trying to use the righteous. But go ahead and read. Partly whilst you were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, uh -huh. and partly whilst you were, became companions of them that were so used. You be using the Lord be afflicting you because he got to afflict you because he said every child he received, he chastised and whom he chastised Love. not is a bastard and not a son. Mm -hmm. And the Lord tell the parents, if you withhold the rod from your child, you hate your child. Mm -hmm. But if you love your child, he said you'll beat him beat time. I mean, I ain't going to beat him when they got to 911, got to take him away. But he going to know he had that rod on his behind. Because, see, uh, our children, and we was the same way when we were children, you know, you, Bobby, don't do that. <laughs> Bobby, right back out there doing <laughs> You look out of the window, you say, Bobby, don't, don't do that. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. He right back out. But when you put that rod on his head, you look out that window, Bobby, you sit in the corner, chilling. Because <laughs> that's what gets your ticket, that rod of correction. Yes, sir. But 34, what did he say? For you had compassion of me and my bonds and took joyfully the, spoil the spoiling of your goods, uh -huh. knowing in yourself that you have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Right, this is that eternal life. This is your crown. This is what you're fighting for. This is what you've been trying to serve the Lord all these years for. i got to get that crown. Go ahead and read. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, uh -huh. which hath great recompense of reward. Yes, it do. For you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. That's right. So you got to, some of us came in at the beginning of the day. Some of us ain't going to come in until the 11th hour, just before Jesus come. But we all going to get the same reward. But some of us had the better heat all day long. Mm -hmm. And some just came right before. You, you can repent at the eleventh hour, just like that cross that thief did on the cross. He said, "Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom." Ain't that something? Yeah. And he made it. But now, but look what he said though. Thirty-seven verse. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. And he quoting that that, that uh, Habakkuk, ain't he? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Now the just shall live by faith. Uh huh. But if any man draw back. 
My soul shall have no pleasure in him. It's just going to live by faith, but the Lord don't want you to draw back and go from God back to the world. Mm -hmm. You left the world to come to God. Now you're going to go back to the world? Jesus said, no, no. 39. <laughs> but we are not of them who draw back into perdition. Which is destruction. But of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Because we got to believe the Lord is going to save us. Because I tell you one thing, if you don't believe, ain't nobody going to believe it for you. Mm. So I got to believe I'm going to make it. And I got to do the things that's necessary for me too. I got to put that work in. You know what I'm saying? I got to sit up in the airport in South Fork for eight hours when I could be at home chilling and taking it. But hey, I got to put that work in, man. Because I've been so bad, I got to do everything I can. I got to paint the church and preach and sing. Mm -hmm. I, I do. I'm, I'm trying to get in there. You know what I'm saying? Hey, <laughs> Jack. <laughs> but uh, this is the thing, no people. Don't draw back. Don't draw back. Don't lose your faith. This is the message of the day. But let's go to Luke 17 now. St. Luke 17. St. Luke 17. We're going to pick it up at verse 5. I mean to tell me this word is so beautiful, man. If you just read it, just think if you had been taught this word ever since you was a child, man, you'll be a force to be reckoned with. Fifth verse, man, we got away from it. Must be good. We got away from it, but we're getting back to it now. Yes, sir. We made a mistake. We, we like the prodigal son. But it says a whole lot of us at this time. <laughs> but uh, Luke 17 and 5, what did it say? And the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. Ain't this something? And that's what we need to say. Lord, increase my faith. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root uh -huh. and be thou planted in the seed. Go ahead. And it should obey you. And I tell you one thing, I ain't been seeing no trees move lately. Man. And a, a, a mustard seed, people, is the smallest among seeds. You mean we, we ain't got that much? I seen a guy with a gold chain with a little bubble on his neck. And a little thing inside. I said, man, what, what that is? He said, that's a mustard seed. I said, a mustard seed? I looked at it real close. I said, is that what the Lord is talking about? If we had that much faith, we ain't got that? Oh, that's a killer. Man. Mm. Mm. But keep reading. What verse you stop I'm at? I'm starting at seven. Go ahead. But which of you, having a servant plowing of feeding cattle will say unto him by and by when he has come from the field, go and sit down to meet. Mm -hmm. Now this guy's working for you, but when y'all get through, you tell him, uh, go and sit down to meet. I'm getting ready to serve you. And don't no boss do that to you, but go ahead and read. And will not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup and uh -huh. gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunk it. And afterward thou shalt eat and drink. That's where they usually do it. But go ahead and read. Doeth he thank the servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I trove not. Uh huh. So likewise ye, when you shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. Uh -huh. We have done that which was our duty to do. So when you do, even when you're doing the will of the Lord, don't get puffed up because he said, don't think you're nothing special because we did, we doing that which was our duty. And what Ecclesiastes will tell you to do, we read it before we open up in the law. Like, the whole okay. duty of man is what? Fear God. God. Keep. This, he said, you're doing that which is your duty. Ain't that something? Yes, sir. But now, let's go a little further. Let's flip over to Luke 22. But these are the things you got to look at. Lord, let me, I got the favor of a mother, see? Boy, woo! I know I got to start reading more now. I know I got to cut that YouTube and that Facebook off and Oprah Winfrey and all these people. I got to cut them off, man, because they ain't talking about nothing. I'm not even listening to what they're saying. It's just passing some time. Luke 22 and 31. Ain't giving you no advice. Thank God for the Sabbath day and his word. 22 and 31. What did it say, bro? And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, 
that he may sift you as wheat. And do you think if Peter was the only one he wanted? He doing you the same way. He trying to shift you out of this thing. But how do we do it? By taking your faith away. Because if you ain't got no faith, you're going to remove your protection. But go ahead and read. What verse? Verse 32. Go ahead. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fell not. Oh, he said, what I'm going to do, Peter, I'm going to put a big wall around you. I'm going to guard you every day. He didn't say that. Mm -hmm. He said, I pray that your faith don't fail, Peter. Because mm -hmm. if your faith fell, that's when you threw dealing. You can't never stop believing. Did you hear what that book is saying? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. And see, this is what this is doing. This is strengthening the brother. And y'all are supposed to take it, read, understand, and strengthen some more people. Don't give up. Keep holding on. What verse? In the 32. Go ahead. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. That's what we were thinking in your mind, but let's see what the Lord told us. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead and read. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day mm -hmm. before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. And then the Lord said, Peter, you're going to deny me three times, man. What you talking But that's that. If he wanted to do it. You know what I'm saying? He wanted to do it. But go ahead and read a little bit more. And he said unto them, when I sent you without purse and scrip uh -huh. and shoes, lacketh you anything? Mm. And, they, and they said nothing. And that's what you got to know about Jesus. But not. Let's go a little further, because he will make a way for you when out of no way. Let's go to Romans 10 now. Romans 10, because I got, I got so many scriptures that I ain't even got a third way through. I'm, ah, mm, I shouldn't have brought 600 scriptures. I don't know what I was thinking. No, I, I, no I'm down. I ain't got no 600 scriptures. <laughs> and so the look at me, you did what? <laughs> no, no, we we, 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 we we dealing with some books. Yes, sir. So I mean, y'all should be ashamed of yourself. See, now when you was young in the club, you were just a dancer. You know? And then uh, five o'clock in the morning, dude, cut the light on. Hey, you got to get on. Huh? You be man, what? Why we got to go? Right. <laughs> You've been there till five o'clock in the morning. But now it comes to the Lord, you can't even spend one hour in the church. <laughs> shame on you, Israel. Shame <laughs> on you. But now Romans 10 and verse 9, what does it say? That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus uh -huh. and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's right, but it's a little bit more than that. Let's see what it is. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, uh -huh. and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Go ahead. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And you got to remember that. If you believe on Jesus, you ain't going to be ashamed. It get a little rough sometimes. It ain't going to be candy and, and uh, you know honey all the time mm -hmm. go ahead for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek uh -huh. for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him oh not just Israel but to all oh. that call mm -hmm. go ahead and read for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved but go ahead this is the question though you can you will be saved if you call him it's going to be more than just calling Jesus name mm-hmm a little bit more to go to it, but this is how you know that you call on the Lord's name. Go ahead. How then shall they call on him in whom they shall, excuse me, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Are you going to call on God you don't believe in? Mm -hmm. You ain't never heard. I, talk, I said, man, you, I went to the wine this one time, you know, a uh, big uh, uh, gospel singing group. Mm -hmm. Sing about Jesus, man, they was jamming. I seen them after the concert. I said, hey, man, uh, you know anything about the God of Israel? And they looked at each other. I said, man, the God of Israel, you know anything about him? I guess I, I don't know nothing. I said, you were singing about him for almost 50 minutes. You don't know nothing about him? Wow. Ain't that something? You singing about the Lord all this time. But I could see it. People be in church all that time and don't know nothing. What are you going there for? You tend to, and like that brother said, you feel good. But as soon as you walk out the door, you feel bad because Satan right, right on you again. What are you going for? But now, 14 verse. Yes, sir. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Uh huh. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Go ahead. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And that's why we thank God for sending Brother Boo. Brother Boo is a preacher from God. You hear what I'm saying? This brother raised up other teachers, man. Yes, I mean, he's blessed by God. You hear what I'm saying? And if you hang around him, you'll be blessed. 
But 15 verse, what did he say? And how shall they preach except they be sent? Oh, the Lord got to send you. But what did they say when they be sent? Go ahead. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace uh -huh. and bring glad tidings of good things. Yes, they feet is beautiful because they come with that word that can get you eternal life. Go ahead and read. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. Sure. For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? Who to believe it? Look around. Walk through uh this time you in and see who really trying to serve the Lord. See when the Passover come around. Now you got the trumpets and the atonement and the tabernacles going to come up. Just look outside and see is the people paying any attention to. Hmm. Two of the biggest dogs on feast in the Bible. And you don't even, you, you walk around like you, you worried about Halloween. Go ahead and read. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How does faith come? By hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Go ahead. But I say, have they not heard? Uh-huh. Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth and their words into the ends of the world. Right. But let's go see what this is talking about. The, he says, they, 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 he said, he said, the sound went through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. Now let's go to Psalms 19. Because this is what Paul is quoting. See, when Paul was on the scene, it wasn't no New Testament. It wasn't nothing but the old book. Everything Paul taught came out of the Old Testament. That's why people slide up on you, look at that Old Testament ain't no good no more, but I believe the New Testament. I said, no, you don't. Mm -hmm. She said, why did you say that? I said, because you just said you don't believe the old book, and the New Testament is quoting what the old book say. Almost verbatim. So now, if you don't believe the old book, you don't believe the new one either. You can't. Ain't no separate they saying the same thing. It's an exact repeat, people. When you make you make a statement like that to me, that let me know that you ain't got no understand. But I don't hold it against you. I try to just share something with the Lord and show it to me. Because I know it's bad teaching. That's why these false prophets got to be stopped because they destroy the minds of the people. Psalms 19 and verse 7, what did he say? The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. But back up to verse one because it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. The heavens declare the glory of God. Uh huh. And the firmament showeth his handy word. Go ahead. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. That's right. But the firmament show of God is handy work. You don't got to walk around with no cross around your neck to remember the Lord. Come on. Just go outside. Look up. Look around. Look in the water. Hey, who did these things? Mm hmm. Go ahead and read. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Uh -huh. Their line has gone out through all the earth Go ahead. and their words to the end of the world. And what was this is what he was quoting. But what he's talking about, the word of God is mm -hmm. went out. And it touched everything. It goes everywhere just like the sun do. But go ahead and read. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, uh -huh. which is a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. That's right. That's where that sun come up every morning. Moving slow. You can see some brightness on it. But then it starts right. Then when it gets to the high noon, that's when it's at its full strength. Mm -hmm. But this is how the Lord is going to return, just like that sun is coming up out that east. But it's going to be like a sight you ain't never seen before. Hmm. But I'm going to tell you, gird up your mind. Then the Lord said, um, our many hearts going to be failing them because of fear? Yeah. But what verse you at now? It's the start of six. Go ahead and read. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, uh -huh. and his circuit into the ends of it. His circuit. So I let you know that this earth is a circle. Because the sun come up, it go around, it go all the way around. Then the sun goes down, it go down under, and come back up again. It's round. But go ahead and read. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Go ahead. The law of the Lord is perfect. Yes, it converting is. Converting the soul. Uh -huh. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Why would you stop believing that? Go ahead and read. The statutes of the Lord are right, uh -huh. rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eye. Yes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Go ahead. The judgments of the Lord are true. And righteous all together. How much should we want them? Go ahead. More to be desired are they than gold. What? Yeah, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Is that right? Maybe we should have gone down and put that money on that lotto ticket. Go home and get that Bible and start reading. Right. Huh? 
Go ahead and read. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. Then he and said, it, for your admonition, that's that warning. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And in keeping of them, there is great reward. Yes, sir. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. And see, that's what we need, people, Lord, to help us with these secret faults. What's a secret fault? That's something that you're doing that's between you and the Lord. And you know you got to clean it up before he come back home. Mm -hmm. But go ahead and read. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Go ahead. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. And the great transgression is once you come into this thing and you fall away. The Lord said to renew them again. It's impossible. And when I see that word impossible, but those who was once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift, mm. if they should fall away to renew them again unto the repentance, saying they have crucified the Son of God afresh and brought him to an open chain. How do I crucify the Son of God afresh? Because when you get baptized and the Lord give you his spirit and his word start dwelling in you, guess what? Christ is being formed in you. He's starting to live in you. His word is in you. But if you turn away, guess what you just did? You just crucified the Lord again. And the Lord said, you won't escape for that. This is why this is serious business. Serious business. Where verses, well, let's go further now. Let's go to 1 Peter 1 now. 1 Peter 1. But y'all getting some understanding from this, people? Yes, sir. This is, this is designed to, to help you. See, a guy like me been around, like I say, brown brother boy and Israel really got a long time. And uh, I had one thing going for me though. Hmm. I collected my notes. I noted up. Every time I went to class, I, I left there with something that I didn't have when I came. See what I'm saying? Fought it, and then for about 10 years, we didn't even miss a Sabbath. Can you imagine that? Hmm. And got the notes to show it. So, hey, whenever I want to pull up anything I want to do, what I like to do is get them go back in the archive, mm -hmm. dust it off, and go straight to work. Yep. So that's a benefit there. But now, we're going to 1 Peter 1 and 18. 1 Peter 1 and 18. 1 Peter 1 and 18. What does it say now? For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold uh -huh. from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Go ahead. But with the precious blood of Christ as of lamb, it's without blemish uh -huh. and without spot. Yes, he is. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. And it was for us because if he didn't show, we all would have been lost. Go ahead and read. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, uh -huh. that your faith and hope might be in God. That ain't nothing but faith there, right? But go ahead and read. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth uh -huh. through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with the pure heart fervently. That's what the Lord want to see, that love. Go ahead and read. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Yes, sir. Go ahead, 24. For all flesh is as grass. All flesh is like what? As grass. Go ahead. And all the glory of man as the flower of grass. Uh-huh. The grass wherewith withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. Uh-huh. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. And this is why how beautiful are the feet of them that preach glad times and preach the gospel of peace. Because the gospel is forever. It's what's going to save us. It's what we need to get out of this hole we in. Because we in a big hole. And we're going to figure it out sooner or later. But now, when let's go a little further. But let's go to Ephesians 6. Let's see what the Lord say. Ephesians 6. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. I mean, why would the Lord write all this about this faith all over the book if you ain't got to have it? Why is he warning you and giving you instructions how you can escape the end times if you only had faith in the Lord? Ephesians 6 and verse 11. Because after you come get this thing and you don't kick and get that baptism, now you got to start walking on your walk to salvation. 
But when you start walking, here's something else you got to do too. Because it's a spiritual walk. And this is what you got to gird yourself up with. Ephesians 6 and 11. Okay, go ahead. Put on the whole armor of God uh -huh. that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And I'm going to tell you people, the devil got some wiles, people. But one thing is, know this, Satan can't touch you unless the Lord give him permission. So you tell me if the devil made you do it, then you did something to offend God. And the Lord sent him on you. Satan cannot make you do nothing. Remember, Satan is an accuser. He can't make you do nothing, but he was accusing the angels of God in heaven day and night. Ain't that so? What is an accuser? You see, he know what you like because he's been watching you. And then he'll lay something that you like in front of you. Mm -hmm. And when you reach for it, that's when he going to accuse you. Lord, look what this, this is your servant right here. Mm -hmm. Look what he's doing right now. Right. I could be a thief. Satan know that. He lay there. Let the guy put a fifty dollar bill there and walk out the room. He hit me in my ear. Hey man, go on get that fifty. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm looking around. So when I get that fifty, as soon as I reach for it, Satan right there. Lord, is this is this you? Is this your man? <laughs> He's uh taking that fifty. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And the Lord see you, but the Lord don't want to kill you. He know you weak. He know you that flesh. He said, just make him that that brand new car he just got. Make him just tear that whole right side up. <laughs> Give him something to think about. <laughs> Soon you leave work, you roll. Oh my God! <laughs> he know how to get your attention, people. But it's you. It's you. It's not me. It is you. But he said, put on the whole arm of God that you may be get to stand against the wiles of the devil. Twelve verse. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Well, what we wrestling against? But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's why you got to put the whole arm on, people. It's a spiritual war. You ain't fighting against flesh and blood. You arguing with your old lady, but you ain't you ain't looking behind her. Mm. She, you arguing with her, but she ain't looking behind you. You know that's the devil, because the boy don't act like this all the time. If you did, you would have never married him. <laughs> he had to cool out sometime. But hey, the thing is, but y'all gotta recognize, hey, baby, this is the devil. Let's cool it out. Let's have let's get some books. Let's read some scripture. Try to cool that run that boy up out of there. But 13 verse, what did he say? Now, what where you start? Read that 12 again. Yes, sir. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh -huh. but against principalities, Go ahead. against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what you so what do we got to do? Yes, sir. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. What is the whole armor? Let's look at it. Stand 14. There. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. First part of the arm you gotta have, you gotta have the truth. Go ahead. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. In other words, you gotta be living in a breastplate to protect you. Go ahead and read. And your feet should, and your feet shod with preparation of the gospel of peace. That's right. If you ain't out teaching, then you're supposed to be spending your time preparing, studying, and reading. So when the Lord call you, you be ready to deal. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Above all. Taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You mean to tell me the shield of faith is above all the armor? Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you should be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Your faith in this word, when you hear that lie, it's a shield, it'll come right up. Uh-uh, that ain't what he said. Mm -hmm. And you have proceed to tell him. But it's above the whole. Read that 16 again. Yes, sir. Maybe we're missing something. Go ahead. Above all, taking the shield of faith, uh -huh. wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Ain't that something? Go ahead. And take the helmet of salvation uh -huh. and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The sword of the spirit. But he said, take that helmet of salvation. Is you going to be walking around with a helmet on all day long, hot as it is down here <laughs> in Oakland? Now, you know what you do? What is the helmet of salvation? That means that thing is on your mind My, all the time. Yes, sir. That's all you're thinking about. I got to get to the king. 
Teach, brother. You know, uh, baby, you sure look good with that dress on, but I tell you one thing. Mm. I got to get to that kingdom. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, I'm digging it. Hey, but well, we going to get there together. That's what we going to do. That's what this all about, ain't it? <laughs> we got to get there. Oh, come on. Ain't that where we going? I mean, if we ain't, we might as well pull up now. And just get dog crazy. Because right. surely we're going to die. Yes, but now, sir. let's go a little further. Uh, who got the time? How am I looking on time? 12 30. What time is class over up here? When you done? When you done? When you done? When you done? My man, my man. Well, I, I'm, I just want to ask y'all, y'all want me to keep going? It's a Sabbath day. Okay, but well, let's go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis 15. Let's go. That's what I like to see. That's what I like to see. Cause y'all gonna you, look in fact, I'm gonna take this jacket off because I think I've been a. I mean, over, I can't take it off. I'm wearing. That's all right. I got the mic on. I didn't wore too many clothes. I'll be ready. This is the first time I've been down here in Oakland. I know I got to dress a little lighter. Well, I'll be all right though. But the main thing is, it's that word, Jesus, and the word. Genesis 15. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Genesis 15. All right, all right. Genesis 15. And verse 1, what does it say? We're talking about the shield of faith. Yes, sir. It's above all armor. Mm -hmm. And you know that this man here, Abraham, is the father of faith. Did you yes, know sir. that? Yes, he is. He believed God. But let's see what he said here. Genesis 15 and 1. What does it say? After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, uh -huh. saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. That's what his name was before he was called Abraham. But he said, read that again. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. You mean Abraham had that shield? Mm-hmm. He had the shield. The father of faith got to have the shield of faith, don't he? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, uh -huh. and the steward of my house is this Elazier of Damascus? Go ahead. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. Go ahead. And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. Uh -huh. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir. But he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thy heir. Go ahead. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. Ain't that something? And the boy ain't had no child. But look at Abraham's seed now. All y'all in here is Abraham's seed. All Israel, all around the world. We have no child. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. That's why he the father of faith. He believed God. But six verse, what did he say? And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And we want to be just like our father Abraham, but let's see how he operates. Let's go to Genesis 26. See, this is some good, good knowledge you're picking up here about your father Abraham. Because that's how he operated, and he became the father of faith. The father of faith. Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. He was called a friend of God. Yeah. But now Genesis uh, 26 and verse 1, what did it say? And there was a famine in the land, beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. Uh -huh. and, uh, and Isaac went unto Abimelech, uh, Abimelech, king, Abimelech mm -hmm. king of the Philistines, into Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell the uh. Ain't that something? He was going down to Egypt. The Lord said, no, no, I'll go to the land. I'm going to tell you. Go ahead. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed, I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Uh, he didn't have no child out in no land, but the Lord promised him children, and that land over there in Jerusalem, the land of Canaan. But look what he said now, fourth verse. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. Uh huh. And will give unto thy seed all these countries. Go ahead. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And in thy seed, talking about Christ, but go ahead. But because thou, Abraham, obeyed my voice, what? And kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. That's why he became the father of faith. 
What did he do? Read that fifth again. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my law. Ain't that some? Mm -hmm. That's why he is the father of the faith. He did everything he said, and when you do that, you're going to be blessed. But let's see how Abraham was before the Lord had came to him. Let's go to uh, Joshua 24. Let's see how Abraham was. He was just like us. And the Lord had to deal with him. But sometimes in order for the Lord to deal with you, he got to get you away from around your familiars. Because you shame to can your Bible around them and all that kind of foolishness. 24 and 1, what did that say? And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel and for their heads uh -huh. and for their judges and for their officers. And they presented themselves before God. And what happened? And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, uh -huh. even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nacor, and they served other gods. What? You mean Abraham served other gods? That's why the Lord told him to get you from your father's house, man. Sometimes you have to break away from your peoples and everything to get this work. Lord, said, if any man come unto me and hate not his mother and his father and himself, his wife and his children, not worthy. he can't be my disciple. But mm -hmm. he don't want you to hate him. You just don't put him before the Lord. But he said, Tira was Abraham's father. Mm -hmm. And Nacor was his brother. And they served mm -hmm. other God. Mm -hmm. And what did he say? Third verse. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led him throughout all the land of Canaan. Go ahead. And multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. Go ahead. I gave unto Isaac, Jacob, and Esau. And I gave unto Esau Mount Seir to uh -huh. possess it. Go ahead. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. And that's how we got down there. But Abraham was a pagan at first. The father of faith. He converted. And it's the same way we would. We've been serving Christmas, all these pagan God. Sam Hain is the God of the dead. That's the God of Halloween. That's when the night is supposed to be so, uh, the, the, the veil between the dead and the living is supposed to be so thin on Halloween that the dead can come back and walk among the living. Now, what kind of foolishness is this? And then you put these masks on and costumes on to hide from these evil spirits so they won't see you. <laughs> and is that some foolishness? And you believe this here and got your children running through the thing? We well, see back in the day, they was burning their children in the fire. Mm -hmm. God, man. Mm -hmm. Facts. We're still doing it today. And they're going to still get burned if they don't turn away from that thing. You see what I'm saying? That's why you got to. You got to get into the book, people, and get away from this pagan. Lord said, come out of Babylon, but you got to come out first where? Here, in your mind. Mm -hmm. But now, let's go to Galatians, the third chapter. Galatians 3. And we're going to pick it up at verse 22. Because we got to have faith. We got to have faith. Galatians 3 and 22. Galatians 3 and 22. And when you get it, go ahead. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin. How many? All. Go ahead. That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Yes, sir. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Because we didn't have that faith. He had to reveal that faith. Remember, he had to build that faith in Israel and send them servants upon him. Go ahead and read. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us into Christ. What law? It was a sacrificial law. Because the Lord put something there to keep you in check once you had sinned. He didn't want to kill you, so he killed an animal. But them animals, you keep killing them cows and stuff, you ain't going to have nothing to eat. Sooner or later, you're going to slow down. But go ahead and read. That we might be justified by faith. Oh, that's what justify you, that faith. Huh? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. No, because you already believe the Lord. You done already been through grammar school. You done been through high school. But now I got to go back to grammar school. No, no. You don't need a schoolmaster no more. You know who Christ is. You know what he wants you to do. You can just believe it and then do it. 
Go ahead and read. For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Uh huh. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Go ahead. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, uh -huh. for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Because that's all the Lord is looking at. He ain't looking at your nationality or your race or nothing, your gender. He, male and female, he's looking at anything outside of that is no good. But, hey, he's looking at the people of God, the children of God. Go ahead and read. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise? If you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed. Ain't that something? And heirs according to the promise. So you got to believe just like Abraham did. Just like Jesus did. But let's go to Jeremiah 23. We got to keep pumping. Now we're in the pump stage, people. So get strapped on your seat belts and let's do it. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremiah 23. Y'all all right? You still all right? I see you getting low, boy. <laughs> I, I see my man. Jane White, she done went down on me a couple of times. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just messing with I don't want to pull out like that. She been holding on. Jeremiah 23 and 28. Yeah. yeah. Hey, but the people been calling them and saying, man, Ray Dog, boy, the brothers gave me too long a lesson. See, I don't want to keep y'all too long. That's my thing. Because I know for as soon as I get in the car, wave everybody, y'all be waving to get called boy right now, man. <laughs> Well, your boy Ray, he's all right, but don't send him back down here. <laughs> <laughs> send him down to Baton Rouge. <laughs> Uh-oh. I heard that, brother. But uh, Jeremiah 23 and 28 now. 23 and 28. 23 and 28. Yes, sir. Okay, go in. The prophet that had the dream. Let him tell a dream. Uh huh. And he didn't have my word. Let him speak my word faithfully. I'll believe in that word and speak it faithfully. Speak it faithfully. No doubt. Go ahead and read. What is the chaff to the wheat? Say after the Lord. The, 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 the wheat is going to get kept and the chaff is going to get burned up. Go uh -huh. ahead and read. Is not my word like as a fire? Yes, it is. Say after the Lord. And like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Because it can't none stand against it. Go ahead. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets. Say after the Lord. That steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Oh, they steal the Lord's words. They ain't trying to teach nobody. They trying to take your money. Go ahead and read. Behold, I am against the prophet, saith the Lord. Go yeah, ahead. That use their tongues and say, he said. He said, Lord, he ain't said that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams. Yes, sir. Saith the Lord. And do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies mm. and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not nor commanded them, therefore they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. Ain't that something they don't profit? Anything they're taking, everything away from me. Now the Lord done told me for you to sow a seed of a thousand dollars. You know, for what? What is it for? What you gonna do when you get it? Come on, man. But I know who told you that it wasn't the Lord. Well, the Lord done told me to send that thousand back to me because I need it. But Mark 11 now. Mark 11. <laughs> yes, sir. It's time for this stuff to stop people. I remember a lady said, You know, I had a choice to buy my little child some pair of shoes or to get a Christmas tree. And she said she bought the tree. Hmm. Mark 11 and 19. Mark 11 and 19. Okay, go ahead. And when even was come, he went out of the city. Mm -hmm. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Uh, Because they had walked past there before, and uh, Jesus told the tree of three, hey, no more growing for you. And Peter seen it, but they come back by and it was dried up. Peter paid mm -hmm. attention to it, but go ahead and read. Yeah, and Peter calling to remember it said unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. Uh-huh. And Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. He told them what? Have faith in God. And you could do the same thing, people. But do you believe that? That's the question. The Lord said, ye are God. 
and all of you are the children of the Most High, but you're going to die like me and then fall like one of the princes. But what is your potential that the Lord wanted you to do? Be God. Become God. See, that's too big sometimes for people to believe. Peace, brother. But now, if you, like I say, you uh, be born, you grow up, you go to grammar school, you go to high school, you go to college if you was blessed, you get a good job, you make a little money, and then you die. Surely, the God's plan has got to be bigger than that. Mm -hmm. But now, 23, what did he say? For verily I say unto you, that whatsoever shall say unto this mountain. Read that one more time. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, uh -huh. and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, uh -huh. he shall have whatsoever he saith. Also, oh, what's the key of faith to? Don't doubt. Don't, Don't waver. doubt. Don't waver. Don't doubt. Believe it, and the Lord will bring it to pass. That's what he just said. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Now there it is in the, in the right now. I can't put it no plain in there. No, you can't. A lot of times we up against it. We run in places we shouldn't run, trying to make moves on ourselves. All you got to do is fall on your knees and call on me. Your father, he got everything you need. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, but we don't believe it. Yes, Go ahead and read. Verse 25. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against any, that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Go ahead. But if you do not forgive, Neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. And this is part of that thing, too, about faith. Because what are you saying when I say, uh, forgive us of our debts as we forget our debt to us? What am I saying? Yes, for our sins. What you're saying is, Lord, if I don't forgive my brother, then don't forgive me for what mm -hmm. I have done. Facts. Teach, brother. Ain't that so? Mm -hmm. You've got to have that forgiveness. You can't be so cold-blooded where you can't forgive, man. And you know why? We should be chief in forgiveness. But look how many times the Lord don't forgave us, man. And then somebody do something to you one time and now you ready to trip. You should be the chief. Man, I just look at bro. Forget about it. I don't care. 800 is gone. We'll, we'll make a way some other kind of way. Let it go, people, and you'll be blessed mm. by God. Now let's go pump. Let's go to Luke 8 and 22. Yes, sir. But see, this, we, and you know what? We just skim in the surface, people. If I could have brought all the scriptures I wanted to bring, we would be here two or three days just dealing with faith. That's how this deepest thing is. And when you read, you look out for it. You'll run up on it. But you got to start reading. You got to read. I see a lot of uh, elders, they retire and they die because they ain't got nothing to do. That is a time you're supposed to pick up that book of Lord and freed you when you can really burn some kind of light, man. You'd be surprised. You will be so sharp in that book, and then you can turn around and teach the young people the word of God. See, we, we ain't taking advantage of this blessing. Now, we in Luke 8 and 22. What did it say, bro? Now, it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples, and he said unto them, let us go over unto the other side of the lake. Go ahead. And they launched forth. Uh -huh. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. Go ahead. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake. Uh -huh. And they were filled with water. Go ahead. They were in jeopardy. Go ahead. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Go ahead. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. And they ceased. And there was a calm. Go ahead. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? Ooh. That, that boat got to shaking a little bit. Hey, I know I would have been that. Hey, Jesus, man, I let you, man. <laughs> I think something's wrong. But <laughs> the tag is, though, hey, Jesus wasn't scared because he had faith. He wouldn't know when the father was going to let nothing happen to him. And then he rebuked the wind and told the sea, peace, peace, still. And the disciples looking at him. And then he's going to crack on him. He said, look here. Where's your faith at, man? <laughs> right. Now, I'd be so shamed. But you look here. But look what he said. Now read that 25 and continue. Yeah, and he said unto and he said unto them, Where is your faith? Uh -huh. And they being afraid wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commanded even the winds and the water, and they obey him. And see, 
This is what the Lord was telling us that you're going to have dominion over the works of his hand. When you become God, man, you what is God's work? Hey, you could tell that son, back up a little bit, I'm too hot. Yeah, and when it come out to stop and just warm my gum a little bit, not too much. I go, okay, right there. Yeah, I mean, you you calling shots, man. <laughs> you old, that, that's God's work. See, we can't fathom that. That's heavy. I just want the sisters too. You can become God, because in God, it ain't no male and female. That's why the angels in God, they don't uh, reproduce like men do or women do. They get their children through adoption. But the thing is, you can have that power, people. But the Lord got to get that mind right before you give you that power. Because right. if some of us, we had all power right now, as soon as somebody said something wrong, what what did you say? Yep. <laughs> you you want to go with her? You know, that, 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 hey, but you got to get that mind right, man. But the Lord, he was showing, you see, Jesus came in the flesh and showed you the things that Adam was supposed to do. But he blew the mission. But he's still in there. But now, let's go to Romans 11 now. Romans 11. Now look here. I got eight more scriptures. Y'all want me to deal with them or can we want to cut it out? I can smell that fried chicken from here now. <laughs> you got a false prophet on that fried chicken. No, but look at now. I'm just asking you people because uh, now cause when you call down to Brother Bowie, I'm going to be right on another night, brother boy. They told me to keep going. No, but I, hey, I want to give you the word people the Lord gave it to me. Ain't no problem with that. I just, I want everybody to be comfortable because uh, y'all treated me so good down here. I got to get back to the Bay Area. Mm. Romans 11, now we're going to pick it up at verse 17. Romans 11 and verse 17. But y'all got the right spirit, man, because we need that word. James been doing a good job down here. Yes, Keep preaching. You young brothers, help him out. The other brothers, too. Stay close to him and give him good advice. Let him know what's going on. 17, what does it say? And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, uh -huh. were graft in among them, and with them partakers of the root of the fatness of the olive tree, uh -huh. boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. That's right, because Israel, this is Israel's tree. But everybody else got to be grabbed at in. But the Gentiles want to come over and take over the, 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 the tree and want to throw Israel away. But go ahead and read. Thou will, stay, thou will say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Uh-huh, that's what the Gentiles say, and the strange, I should say. Go ahead. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Why was they broken because off? Of unbelief. You see, it's everywhere. You can't get around it. You got to have it. Go ahead and read. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Oh, uh, you standest by what is, what is faith? It's belief, ain't it? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Be not high-minded, but fear. Because he will cut you off just like he cast them off. Go ahead. For if God spare not the natural branches. Oh, who the natural branches? It's Israel, Israel. man. Go ahead. Take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Go ahead. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God. Uh huh. On them which fell, severity. Severity, which Lord was severe. He dropped a hell of a thing on us and cast us through every land upon the heaven for disobedience and from non belief. Go ahead and read. But toward thee, goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, uh -huh. otherwise thou also shall be cut off. Yes, sir. And they also, if they abide not, still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. But what's going to measure your thing? Your unbelief or your disbelief. Go ahead and read. For if thou were cut off, excuse me, if, for if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, uh -huh. and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Ain't that something? It's just like I knock a piece of wood out this thing here. Mm -hmm. Now, if I want to put another piece there, I got to file it down, shape it, put it in there, sand it, and paint it. But the natural piece that came out of it, I could just stick it right back on and be through with it. Because that's the natural branch. That's what Israel is. But let's look at this thing a little bit closer. Let's go to Jeremiah 11. 
but it's always dealing with that unbelief. Ain't that something? Yes, sir. And we got to get by that. We got to get by. We got to be better than our father. Uh, uh, Jeremiah 11 and 11. Jeremiah 11 and 11. Go ahead. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will bring evil upon them, mm. which they shall not be able to escape. Lord, don't bring no evil, do we? Go ahead and read. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. Why? Then shall the cities of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem go and cry unto the gods unto whom they offer incense. All the Lord says, you didn't want to hear me? Go ahead and call them gods who you burn incense to. Call old Santa Claus and them to see if they're going to show up to help you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. But they shall not save them at all in the time of their trouble. No, they ain't going to save them. Go ahead. For according to the number of the cities, of thy cities were thy gods. And that ain't no lie because I'm riding over here. And seeing churches almost on every two or three churches. Which one telling the truth? Go ahead, read. Oh, Judah, uh -huh. and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem, have you set up altars to that shameful thing? Go ahead. Even altars to burn incense into Baal. And that's the devil. Go ahead. Therefore, pray not thou for this people. You see, the Lord said, don't even pray for this people. You can get so bad. The Lord said, don't pray for them. It's like I see a kid off the street. I don't know what he's done to me. Can you pray for me? I said, no, brother, I can't pray for you. I don't know what you've been doing, but I tell you one thing, you have a better chance of praying for yourself. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know what you done done. Right. Lord done told me, don't pray for these people. Mm -hmm. But go ahead and read. Neither lift up a cry or a prayer for them. Why? For I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. I wonder why he ain't gonna hear you. Because you've been kicking against the word. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. What hath my beloved to do in mine house? Seeing she hath wrought lewdness with many, and the holy flesh is passed from thee? Go ahead. When thou doest evil, then thou rejoicest. Instead of being sad and converted, and celebrate. You ain't that some? Go ahead and read. The Lord called thy name a green olive tree. What did he call you? A green olive tree. Because that's what you is as long as you buy it in the vine. Come on. Go ahead and read. Fair and of goodly fruit. Uh -huh. With the noise of a great tumult. He hath kindled fire upon it, and the branches of it are broken. Who is the branches, people? Israel. You see how this book is tighter than Come the most on the brook and brick. Go ahead. For the Lord of hosts that planted thee hath pronounced evil against thee. Why? For, for the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah, which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger in offering incense unto Baal. You mean to tell me the white man didn't do all this to us? Mm -mm. We did it. I say, go ahead. And the Lord hath given me knowledge of it, and I know it. Then thou showest me their doing. Ain't that some? But this is why we in trouble, people, because of our own foolishness. Our own. He said, "In whole shit, Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help." Yes, sir. But the question is, do you want to be here? Do you want to be here? But now, let's go to Romans fourteen. We almost out of here, people. We almost out of here. Yes, sir. Romans uh, 14 and 23, 22. See, Mike came and picked me up from the, the uh, airport last night. We didn't get home till about 2 or 3 in the morning because there's a flight with delay, delay, delay. And I might have got about one hour or two hours of sleep. But that ain't no excuse because I don't care how you feel, you got to still preach his word. But I'm going to sleep tonight. <laughs> if it's God's will. You know what I say? He might send me out on another mission. How you going to sleep, huh? <laughs> and, and don't you know in Proverbs, it tells you to hate sleep. Hmm. A little sl sleep and a little slumming and a little fold of the head, your property will come up on you. You'll be poor as a son of gun. Come on, brother. Romans 14 and 22. What did it say now? Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in the thing which he alloweth. Go ahead. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat. So that doubt ain't no good, people. Get rid of that doubt. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. You see how deep that faith is? If you don't believe it and you doing Heavy. it, it is sin. Ain't that something? Heavy. This is why you got to look at this faith close. Let's go to Proverbs 20. 
Proverbs 20. Proverbs 20, and we're going to read 5 and 6. Hitting these little things that nobody pay no attention to. But they'll knock this whole town down. Come on. Proverbs 20, 5 and 6. What did it say, my brother? Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water. What? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. But a man of understanding will draw it out. That's right, because that deep water has got to be in your mind. What is that deep water? Word. The word. Go ahead and read. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. Ooh. Every man will proclaim his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. Ain't that so? So when you see a cat walking around time, I'm sanctified and holy. Yeah, look at him with the eyes suspect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on. Well, the Lord said, uh, many will proclaim their own righteousness, but a faithful man who can, who can find one. That's why he said earlier, if you had the faith of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. Just say that faith is something to change, people. Let's see. Let's go to Isaiah, the first chapter. Isaiah 1 and 21. But we want to drill that faith thing in your mind today so you will know I don't never want to give up on God. I don't never want to stop believing. Even sometimes your own flesh is your worst enemy. Isaiah, the first chapter and verse 21. Let's see what you, we used to be called when we was in our own land. Isaiah 1 and 21. And when you get it, read. How is the faithful city becoming harlot? Wait a minute. They called us the faithful city? We must have had some faith back then, bro. Come on, brother. But he said we turned into a heart. Go ahead and read. It was full of judgment. Righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. And it's still there to this day. Go ahead and read. Thy silver has become dross. Thy wine mixed with water. On the low end, they call it wild Irish road. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> go ahead and read. <laughs> Thy princes are rebellious. Yes. And companions of thieves. Yes. Everyone loveth gifts and followeth after reward. Because they don't care nothing about the word of God. Go ahead. They judge not the fatherless, neither doeth the cause of the widow come into them. They don't come because they don't hear nothing about the widow. Girl, I know your man is gone. Let's keep doing it. You'll be all right. Mm -hmm. But keep putting that money in the pot. Go ahead, 24. What is it? Therefore saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel. Ah, I will ease me of mine adversaries uh -huh. and avenge me of mine enemies. Because the Lord said, don't keep put up with your foolishness. Go ahead. And I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross and take away all thy tin. Go ahead. And I will restore thy judges as at the first uh -huh. and thy counselors as the beginning. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. The Lord going to take her back there. We on our way, people. That's why we can't stop believing now. Nah. Go ahead and read. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment uh -huh. and her converts with righteousness. Go ahead. And the destruction of the transgressors of the sinners shall be together. Uh -huh. And they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. That's the one that's going to be consumed. They that forsake the Lord. Go ahead and read. For they shall be ashamed of the oaks which you have desired. Uh -huh. And you shall be confounded for the, for the gardens that you have chosen. Yes, sir. For but but go ahead and read. For ye shall be as an oak whose leaf fadeth, and as a garden that hath no water. You ain't going to grow. Your fruit is going to be ripe. Go ahead and read. And the strong shall be as a toe, and the maker of it as a spark. And they shall both burn together, and none shall quench them. I don't have to remind you what that is. Come on. Brother. Let's go to Second Timothy now. But we're dealing with that faith today because we ain't going to the fire. Be the Lord's will. We got to go to the kingdom. Second Timothy 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Second Timothy 2 and verse 1. Okay. What did he say? Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Yes. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, 
the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Ain't that some? But you got to commit it to who? Faithful men who will be able to teach others also. But go ahead and read. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So sometimes you got to go through something a little rough this time. You know, you, you got to be a soldier. Everything ain't going to be peanut butter and jelly. Come on. But go ahead and read. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Go ahead. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. That's right. You got to do the thing right if you want the crown. Come on, Reverend. Is that right? Yes, sir. Now, let me see. I'm looking for this one scripture, but we'll get it. Let's go to James, the second chapter now. James, the second chapter. James, the second chapter, and we're going to pick it up at uh, verse 21. James 2 and 21. And we just got uh, three more after this. Okay, go ahead. Was not Abraham our father justified by works yes, when he, he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Uh huh. Seest thou have faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? That's right. Go ahead. And the scripture was fulfilled, which, excuse me, and the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ain't that something? And when you believe God, it's going to be accounted to you for righteousness. And you will become a friend of God. Instead of a servant, you'll be God's friend. Come on. And I can't think of no better friend than the Lord. Mm. But go ahead and read now. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only? Uh-huh. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works uh -huh. when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? Go ahead. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So you got to have faith and works. They have a combination that go together. But now, let's go back to 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter. And we got two more after this. 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter, we're going to pick it up at verse 13. Because the Lord has given us a hell of a message by Mr. Timothy here. 1 Timothy 4 and verse 13. Okay, go ahead. Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Oh, so till the Lord come, give attention to what? Reading, reading exhortation, exhortation, and, and doctrine. doctrine. Go ahead. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, uh -huh. which was given thee by prophecy, go with ahead. the laying on of the hands of the presbyter. Well, presbyter. That's that healing thing. Mm -hmm. That's why they call the hospitals the Presbyterian. Yep. Because it's a healing, but you're supposed to be just talking about the word of God. Well, go ahead and read. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy, pro that thy profiting may appear to all. Go ahead. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt, excuse me, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Ain't that so? Yes, sir. This word and this faith is so powerful. You not only will you save yourself, but them that hear you. Come on. Preaching that good word of God. Yes, sir. Now, let's go to 1 John 5, and we got one more after this, and it's so. St. John, I'm going to say 1 John now. 1 mm -hmm. John, not St. John, it's right before Revelation. The Apostle John, not John the Baptist. 1 John 5 and verse 1. First John 5 and 1. Okay, what did it say? Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. You got to believe it, though. Go ahead. And everyone that loveth him that begot loveth him also that is begotten of him. Uh-huh. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Oh, that's how we know we love God, huh? When we love God and keep his commandments. Ain't that something? That's the love of God. Go ahead. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. What? They're not grievous. His commandments ain't grievous? Not at all. 
But we know what's grievous is your own flesh. Hmm. It ain't your commandments. Go ahead and read. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Uh -huh. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even let's, see, our faith. let's see what that victory is that overcometh the world. Go ahead. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? But this, read that fourth verse for me. Mm -hmm. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So that is what's going to be the victory that overcome the world? How much you believe? The faith in the mm -hmm. word of God. Mm -hmm. And keeping them commandments, because faith without works is like the body without the spirit. Come on, brother. It's dead. Now turn over to the fifth chapter. We're in the fourth chapter, and we're going to read one verse, and this is going to be it. Wait a minute, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. All right, all right, five, and let's read verse 10, you're right. Let's read verse 10. I'm getting tired myself. I don't know what in the hell I'm in. <laughs> verse he, five, and verse, uh, 5 and 10. Yes, sir. What does it say? He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. Uh -huh. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. Ain't that cold? That's heaven. And if you don't believe that record, you're through dealing. So I thank you for your time. And I hope somebody learned something of what I tried to bring. Bless my brother for doing some praise Mexican God. reading. Praise God. And uh, praise the Lord God of Israel.